Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's class, part two of uh, tree illustration using water soluble uh, graphite and ink. And I am your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and I'm thrilled to be joining you for this ongoing drawing and painting series uh, of which we've been doing for almost two years now. So if you're just joining us, uh, there are tons of other classes that you can uh, go back and watch on YouTube. And part one of tonight's class can also be found on, on YouTube. And our lovely moderator Chanel can drop the link to last week's class in the chat if you missed it and are just joining us tonight for part two. So I'm going to switch to my tabletop view and I will go over supplies. Don't forget to tag your work with those hashtags, make it with Michael's or Michael's classes. You can also follow me on Instagram at Adrian Hodge Art. And here is a few of my business cards with some of my work using ink. So I use a lot of calligraphy ink in my work. I'm also on Facebook, Adrian Hodge Fine Art. You can find me there. Uh, Chanel can also drop my link tree in the chat. Uh, I'm available right now for private lessons. You can book those directly through a link that's in my link tree if you're you're interested. Okay, so and then I'm also teaching in person classes in the, the Austin area at the contemporary art school at Laguna Gloria if anybody's in Austin. Okay, so we're going to be creating something that looks Something like this, results may vary depending on your where you are in your art journey. We are using Arches watercolor paper. We've got 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. We are using the Faber-Castell graphite aquarelle. So they are, these are the water soluble graphite. So we're going to add some water to these with some paint brushes tonight and that's going to be really fun. We're going to get this watered down effect to happen here. We are also, so the paint brushes that we're using are the Princeton Aqua Elite. You can use any paint brushes that you have on hand. You're going to want uh, the flat brush was really what we used last week for applying the, the ink, but what was on the supply list uh, for the water soluble graphite was a size one. So a fine liner brush like this and then a round brush. So this is a size six and it's round. So any round and fine liner brush will work great for what we're doing tonight. Um, last week, we also used the um, Liquitex uh, ink, which I did not pull out tonight because uh, we're already done with that step but I had the primary set and then I had a uh, another color that I have right here handy is the yellow oxide of the Liquitex. And you can go back and check out class number one if you're just joining us to, to see what the Liquitex box looked like. If you had not purchased that supply yet, uh, you can use really any ink would work. You could use watercolor, you could use acrylic. Um, a lot of things can be subbed uh, for this uh, supply list tonight, except for the water soluble graphite is pretty unique, but you could use a number of other things to get a similar effect. You could use um, black illustration pens and then maybe some black watercolor or black ink watered down to get the more transparent effect that we're going to get with the water soluble graphite. So just ask me if you have any other questions about substitutes. Um, most of the time the answer is going to be yes. If you think something else will work for a sub, it probably will. And if you know, you're not sure, you can always just try it. Um, there's really no wrong or right when it comes to art making and experimentation is part of the fun, in my opinion. We are also going to be adding some white highlights to what we're creating tonight using the Winsor & Newton 
a white ink. It comes in a box that looks like this. And I believe that is it. Oh, you're going to want some paper towels and a water cup or maybe two water cups are always nice to have a backup. And then you're gonna want some sort of dish for the ink. So I like to use little ceramic dishes like this. Um, you could also use a plastic uh, paint palette or um, even like a plastic Tupperware lid would be fine. Just, you know, don't use anything that you're planning to, you know, eat off of later because ink is not the most non-toxic uh, thing out there. So you definitely want something that you're using just for your art supplies if you're going to use it to pour your ink in. So those are all the supplies that we're going to need tonight and then I'm just going to review what we did last week and then we'll we'll get get back to it. Are there any questions about supplies before I start reviewing last week? No, um, you are good to go. Okay, great. So last week we took our ink and we also had some tape last week, but that was not uh, completely necessary, but we taped off this uh, little margin and then we painted with our, our ink. We made a green using the yellow oxide and some blue. I suggested some other color uh, combinations that you could have used to maybe do something other than green, like maybe a nice orange or pink. And we we painted a nice even layer, although it didn't have to be perfect. All these like different striations that maybe happened whenever you were applying the ink will just add to an interesting background effect um, with the, the tree illustration that we're going to put on here. And I did put a second coat of ink on mine after the class was done last week. So that's one thing I just want to add that if yours was looking, you know, kind of thin and you were thinking about maybe adding another layer to it, you could do that. You could do multiple versions of this too. So um, I actually did create another background in case anybody didn't want to bother with the tape you could paint a very uneven background layer and just leave your brush strokes visible at the end. And I think that would also uh, be interesting if you just didn't want to bother with the tape, that is another option. So that was kind of the fast version that I had talked about at the beginning of last week. And then I got caught up with the process of painting the background that I never actually showed you <laughs> the, the fast version. And that would just be you know, skipping over taping the margins and just going right for it with the ink. All right, and then since we were waiting for our ink to dry last week, we spent some time just sketching this image. And we were talking about implied lines the whole time and how to create atmospheric perspective by making things in the foreground nice and big and distinct and making things smaller and less distinct in the uh, background. And that was about as far as we got with the sketch, but I am going to sketch it again. So if you're just joining us and you missed the entire uh, sketching portion, you can go back and check out uh, last week's class to catch up and, um, but. Tonight, I'm going to go really quickly when I sketch this again using the water soluble graphite. And, um, and then we'll add the uh, water to it to thin it out and get that watery effect to happen. And then we'll add our highlights with the, the white ink. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the reference photo here on my iPad. just one moment to get it handy again. So this was the reference image that was included in the supply list for last week and tonight. And so now I'm just going to sketch it again using these water soluble graphites. And I'm going to go very quickly, like I said. And if I go too fast, you can uh, 
refer back to last week's class or you can wait for the um, replay of tonight's class and slow it down. A lot of the detail that we're putting in on this, it's going to be covered up or lost whenever we add the, uh, sorry, my cat is threatening to jump onto my desk right now. So I'm just being very <laughs> on edge. I'm afraid she's about to do it. Okay, uh, give me one moment. I'm gonna go put her in a bedroom. I'll be right back. Thank you for your patience. I may have just sustained a, <laughs> a big cat scratch on my leg while she was jumping onto the desk. I'm gonna power through and deal with that later. That's what I get for wearing shorts, I guess, at my desk. All right. Um, it's never happened to me before where I've sustained an, an injury while teaching a class. Um, I am gonna need just one more moment, y'all. I really do have a, a pretty bad cat scratch on my leg. Give me just 30 seconds. one way to get your adrenaline pumping. Okay, so back to this tree sketch. We're looking for these shapes of shadows. That's all I'm going to really put in here and I'm going to avoid putting a whole lot of detail because the detail is best to add at the end or go back in and put it on top. And I actually did sketch this with my pencil first. Um, and then I uh, sketched back on top of it with the water soluble graphite, which is a good way to start. The only reason I'm not doing that in the class is because when I sketch very lightly with an H pencil, with a light pencil work, it never shows up on these Zoom classes. So the, the best way to do it is how I did it last week, where I sketched it with a nice dark pencil. And so you can go back and check out that tutorial um, on just, you know, getting the, the sketch or the layout on there. All right, so I'm leaving some space here at the bottom for those leaves in the foreground. Another supply that I didn't mention was to have an eraser on hand. Uh, I've got a Faber Castell synthetic eraser here. I just took the, the wrapper off of it. So we were looking for those big shapes of leaves in the foreground. Highlighting some very specific ones. And like I said, I'm going very quickly because I already went very slowly and did this last week. So if anybody thinks I'm going too fast, you've got last week's class to go back and refer to. And there's some nice overlap happening of a lot of these 
mushrooms on the side of the tree. So I just erased the edge of the, the tree. Although honestly, we don't really need to erase anything as we go here because anything that needs to be erased, we can kind of erase it with our watercolor or with the water that's going to make it bleed out. But if we don't want a line there, we can just go ahead and erase it as well. And the beautiful thing about this ink being totally dry is we can really do whatever we want on top of it. It's super permanent. Well, it's not going anywhere, especially if it was from a week ago. If your ink is still wet in any way, you're going to have a hard time drawing and erasing on top of it like this. We're just looking for these kind of little UFO shapes or maybe like a symbol um, on a drum kit or a little bell shape. We named them a lot of different things last week. Sometimes calling something something other than what it is when you're trying to draw the shape. Like if I said, let's just draw these mushrooms now, it feels daunting for some reason. But when we call it something else, for some reason that makes it easier. Just a psychological trick to get over what we classify as hard to draw. So once we've got those shapes in there, then we want to look for these shadows that are being cast underneath them. And it's not necessarily the mirror image of the shape, the shadow that's being cast. And we want to keep in mind the contours of the tree itself, which I talked about last week. I really broke this down a lot more last week than I'm doing now. So that's why I'm not really explaining it too much again, because I don't want to be redundant. But the main idea is that we're making them smaller as we go up the tree. And they actually are getting smaller. It's not just atmospheric perspective, but that also adds to the atmospheric perspective, having them things that are farther away be smaller. But it appears that these mushrooms just actually get smaller as they, they go up the tree not just the optical illusion that's happening like with the trees in the background. The trees in the background here are likely the same size as our tree in the foreground, but they just appear smaller because they are so far away. So I'll go ahead and sketch in this horizon back here. It slopes down and we didn't actually get to the background trees when we were sketching last week, but we've got this one pretty big one back there. And then we've got that's darker. And then we've got some that are going in front that are overlapping these diagonal ones. So we want to make sure we're erasing that space where they're overlapping. We don't have to draw every single tree or branch that we're seeing back there. We're just looking for the ones that stand out the most and are the most interesting to us. And as long as we're making them sort of wobbly, some of them can be a little straight, but if we get some like wobbly lines in there, they're going to feel very organic 
and tree-like. And then just keep in mind as we're filling these in, those contours. So if we're making them feel tubular and rounded as we're filling them in. So I'm gonna go ahead and start filling them in using the side of this water-soluble graphite pencil. I'm using a 4B right now, by the way, in these, but I'm gonna to switch to the, the 8B, the really dark one so that I can really quickly fill in some of these darker tree trunks and branches that I'm seeing. Also wanna get this one that's coming in really diagonal. But like I said, we don't have to get them all in there. So I just, Think about kind of rounding around the, the side of that. So the value sort of the shadow wraps around the edge there. So it feels three dimensional. Could even use our little contour lines that we like to use in all these classes to wrap around. So that way it feels really rounded. Even though we're going to blend this out with our paintbrush, the more we add this value in a way that makes it feel three-dimensional, it's always going to come across later on. Every little bit of detail that we, we put into our mark making makes a difference. Okay, and I'm going to go kind of the opposite direction of what I did last week when I was sketching. So I'm going to start out with these kind of directional lines that follow what the, the hillside is doing back here, rather than sketching the leaves, because the leaves are showing up more as like a big mass of dark and light back here. They're very blurry. We're not seeing any detail on them. And then as we get to the middle ground, I'll maybe start to do some little circles and oval shapes. So we're starting to see a few of these leaves standing out as more shapes than just dots or a mass that's all connected back here. And then as we get closer to the tree in the foreground, then we can make them slightly bigger and then when we get to, you know, really close to the tree, this one stick here, this like piece of wood that was interesting that we sketched last week as well, then we can start to put, you know, a little bit more of a distinct shape on stuff. And then obviously these ones in the foreground, we drew nice and big. So that's our main sketch. And now we just wanna look for the rest of the dark value. We started to put some of the value in the tree back here. I'm gonna go ahead and get like a mass of leaves that I'm seeing. And I'm looking more for this like kind of patchwork feeling on these, these leaves. So just like this big blurry mass, kind of like we did at the bottom of the hill. And then we can maybe put in just like a few vertical lines for these trees that are really far away in the distance. Or maybe some funny diagonal lines back there. It can be very less distinct. Okay, so now let's get some of this heavier value in the foreground. We've got a lot of value happening under that stick or that piece of wood right there, close in the foreground. And then I'm just filling in like a lot of these areas that just feel darker. And the amount of pressure that we're putting on this water-soluble water graphite, if you wanna do like a little test on another piece of watercolor paper to just see um, what happens. Like here, let's do a little test on on this other piece that I have here. So 
if I draw a shape, like a big, let's just do our little calf, like a cereal bowl shape, like some of these shadows that we're seeing under the, the mushrooms, and I'm putting my full pressure on there, that's gonna give me a lot for the water to grab onto and spread around. And then if I do just like a little area where I do like this, I can see what'll happen. And then I'll put even less pressure. So fill it in even less. And then maybe just do like a few lines, do like a thick line, a medium line, and a thin line. Like that. Basically, the more of that you lay down, the more the water is going to have to grab onto when you add the water. So I grabbed my round paintbrush, and you can see when I add water to that, how I, it can really spread around nice and dark. So it's going to bleed quite a bit if we do that and then we stretch it. But if we just fill it in, like we're going to do underneath the mushrooms, if we just fill it in and then stop, then we've got a nice juicy dark area and I can clean that off of my uh, paintbrush, the graphite that's on the paintbrush so that it doesn't bleed, you know, when I do like a thinner line. So it's really just the amount of water that you add and the amount of the graphite that you have there, like a little bit goes a very long way. So even that just medium amount is gonna stretch quite a bit. So this is where I was saying we wanna hold off on putting too much detail because we're gonna lose that detail when we stretch it around. And yeah, it does look like watercolor, but we can also go direct on top of this when it's dry. We can stretch it out pretty far too, and then we can go back on top and get some interesting texture. So we want to work kind of quickly here so that it can dry and we have time to go back in. But if mine's not dry and I don't have time, then I'll just uh, go back and add my dry texture on top of this one when we're done. So I might do it that way. So results are obviously going to vary just because our drying time on all of this um by the end of the class so let me go ahead and finish getting so i just wanted you to see that so that as you're um as you're adding your shadows you can be aware you know if you're kind of heavy-handed in the way you're applying all of the value to just you know rein that in just a little bit if you don't want it to be super dark because it's going to go a long way. And yeah, somebody said in the, the chat that it's a lot like watercolor and it is. And, you know, whenever something has a very similar effect as something else, a lot of times people will say, well, why use this supply if you can do the same thing, you know, with this other supply? And the answer is, preference usually is just preference it's also cool to try new things and the thing that you can't do with watercolor is get this back and forth between the textures that we're adding you would have to do a little bit of extra finessing for sure to achieve something like this with uh, like pen and ink and then some watercolor. You would definitely want to practice those like effortless, loose implied skills. I think it's a little easier to get this effect that we're going for today with these supplies. Okay, and then the last thing that I didn't put in there, and this is the kind of detail that's definitely going to get lost, um, but I want to just put some of the bark on the tree in there as well, even if I'm going to lose it. This is what I'm going to end up putting back in at the end, but it's just in case our time gets away from us a little bit. I want to make sure I've drawn that again and just mentioned that. So we also want to be really mindful since, you know, that demo I just showed you how 
far this will stretch and how wet, you know, it could be very easy to get carried away when we start adding the water and like, you know, end up putting a whole lot of water down. And I stop myself from saying too much because who am I to say if it's too much? But, you know, just keep in mind, you're not going to be able to, it is too much if you want to be able to go back in and draw on top of it. You're just going to have to, it's not too much because you're just going to have to wait. So if you can be patient, you can put as much water as this paper can handle. And this paper can probably handle quite a bit. All right. I just want to make sure I got at least one good shadow underneath all of these big mushrooms and then I'll start adding the, the water with the paintbrush. Also, I mentioned this in last week's class, but I want to make sure that I mention it again. This is something that is very much a signature style for me in my personal artwork. If you don't follow me on Instagram um, or you haven't checked out my website or anything like that, just know that what we're making tonight is very much my personal brand, if you will. So please make sure you're tagging me if you're sharing this, you know, just want to be aware when we're using other people's intellectual property that we're giving them credit. So that's me in this case. For learning purposes, it's, you know, copyright is wide open when, you know, we can always emulate or copy another person's style when we're learning, but, you know, sometimes we can post things on Instagram and forget to do that. And then it gives the impression that it's our intellectual property. And then that's where the copyright issues come in. So it took me a while in these classes to start doing stuff that is more my style. I've only been doing it very recently. Um, most of the time I was kind of staying in the realm of, you know, just cool looking stuff that I thought the Michaels class audiences would appreciate. But two years in here, I've started giving away some, some of my trade secrets here and showing behind the scenes how I do a lot of stuff in, in my personal artwork. So just want to make sure I mention that bit about, you know, giving me credit. Okay, so right now it feels like there's not a huge separation between this tree and the leaves. And that really is going to be achieved in the amount of value and shadow that we have down here. So but I don't want to put too much because I want to keep it dry enough where I can go back in and draw on top of that. So even though it doesn't feel like a separation right now, once I start bleeding this color around or this graphite around, it's going to definitely come across. All right, so there's the full sketch. And then now I'm going to just start slow, start slow and small with the, the liner brush. And then we get my paper towel ready in case I go, go too hard, go too far, or, you know, put too much. And I want to take some back out and I'm going to start with the heavier shadows and I'm not going to spread it around yet. I'm just going to fill in those nice, juicy, dark shapes. And then I'm going to kind of draw with my paintbrush around some of these edges, but in a very implied way. And then I'm dipping my brush back in the water so I can get some more water so they can all have that same juicy effect. And I'm just 
first of all, focusing on the heavier shadows underneath the mushrooms, the, the biggest mushrooms. I find that it's easier to start with the things that require more pressure and then let up on your pressure because for the lighter stuff, because if we try to start with the lighter stuff, we might go a little too heavy and then it might be harder to pull, you know. I think it's easier to let up on pressure than it is to increase it, but maybe you work differently. But in my experience, people tend to be uh, heavy handed at the start and less pressure it takes a little bit more practice. So once we've spent some time on these heavier shadows, it might be easier to pull back on our, our pressure for the lighter shadows. We've got a lot of little crescent moons, it feels like, in these shadows so far. And then I'm just gonna bounce around, honestly, I'm gonna bounce around quite a bit and get real sketchy with my lines and try to just achieve this, you know, because it's very easy to feel like, oh, we put lots on there, but then now we, when we add the, the water to it, it makes everything much darker. So now I'm just kind of filling in all those those bigger, heavier shadows with the water and kind of redrawing it with my paintbrush. Also, this will continue to bleed as we, we add our other values onto it. So might as well go ahead and do that because I don't want to get too far ahead here and then lose some of our detail. Okay, so I've got my big brush and I'm gonna go really quickly with this and I'm gonna try to weave in and out of what we just did and go ahead and fill in like a, cause there's a pretty heavy shadow across this whole tree. And I wanna just get that sense of that big shadow here. So a few of these are gonna bleed as I do this, and that's fine. And this is what I mean about how we might have to redraw some of this and get the, the value back in there. But I want this big shadow, especially in front here to feel connected. So we're just gonna have to let go of some of the detail that we got there. And if it goes too much, you can grab it out paper towel and then we can obviously redraw it if we need to. I'm not going to do too much of that because I don't want it to get too wet. I also want this whole tree to feel very connected together. This is one of those things where when I'm working in my studio, I can just do things really fast. And then when I'm trying to like slow down and explain it, it's like I lose the, it's easy to lose the momentum. So I'm going to just do this really quickly here. So everywhere where I want it to feel kind of connected, so in the foreground and the middle ground and the background, I just, and I want this to dry too before we get our highlights on here. So, and so I can put that detail back in. So I want the grass to feel kind of connected. So I'm using just like one big brush stroke here. Like I said, it goes kind of quick. And that was maybe a little too much. And grab it back out. Okay, and then that's kind of it for like the, the big areas. And it is going to get a little blurry here for a second, but we're going to put this detail back in, I promise. 
go ahead and get these darker trees back here. But I want to leave like a little gap in them for the, the leaves that are going in front of them. So I'll do that. And then I'm also being very mindful of how I'm filling it in on these other trees to leave space for where the, the leaves are going in front of it. Maybe a little more than that. Looks pretty good. And this is another way to make it obvious where the overlapping is happening. You don't miss, this is what I meant about how erasing was kind of counterintuitive because we can easily just erase in the way that we're applying the water to this. And this is definitely not something you can do with watercolor as far as this kind of push and pull watercolor is going to behave very differently just in, in regards to the process. Like it might have a similar effect if you're skilled in your watercolor application it can certainly achieve a similar effect, but it's going to be much different in the way you're the process. And then once your paintbrush has this graphite on it, you can just, you know, add some like transparent stuff. You can, you know, you can just draw directly with the, the paintbrush. And then blur out a few of these background moments too here. But yeah, again, I'm going to be careful not to, I don't want too much detail on these background trees because they're far away. So we don't want to be able to see them as distinctly because we want to achieve that atmospheric perspective. But it is really fun how some of those lines that were kind of faint, just brushing over them with the, the paintbrush now with the water, they like come to life out of the background. So mostly I'm just trying to achieve this effect of connection between like the mass of leaves in the background, like just make it feel like it's all connected back there. And then when it dries, you can see it's going to dry a little lighter, like it felt kind of scary, like I was making it all super dark a second ago. And then I was like, all oh, right, I forget how it, it dries and then looks lighter, which is the case with a lot of water media. It's always going to look different when it's dry versus when it's wet. And it does dry pretty quickly, so that's good for our time constraint here. Right. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of draw with it. This is what is so fun about it is you can really just achieve this really cool effect and like get these really transparent layers to happen by just drawing with the graphite that you you know pulled from a different area so i just pulled that from that dark piece of wood right there and then i'm putting some of this detail back in with my paintbrush so you can put the detail back in with the paintbrush, or you can put it back in, or you could even, you know, have a little test area over here. And I can like get some from right there, right? And then draw with it if you don't want to pull it from part of your, your drawing. I'm going back in and putting some of that bark back in. And I just love this dreamy effect. This is how, if you're not familiar with my artwork, I try to say in everything that I'm doing with my work, I'm trying to make it look like 
a photograph in a dream. And it's definitely taken me years of practice to be able to get this like effortless ethereal effect to happen. So if it's not happening effortlessly, just keep practicing and it'll, it'll get easier with time. Okay, so yeah, that separation between the tree and the leaves is a little more pronounced now and we can now we can go back this is the fun part where we can put all those details that we lost when we were blurring it out back in so i'm just kind of drawing around some of these bigger leaves in the foreground and i can keep doing this action where i'm just brushing my paintbrush over my little test piece from before and then using that to draw with. I honestly didn't do as much of this before. I'm kind of playing around with this effect more tonight than I did when I was creating this piece for the class. I think I was being more careful not to lose you know, the effect that I had created when I was planning this class, but now that I have figured out how to use the materials to my advantage, it's really fun to play with it like this. I know I need to move on to the highlights, but I'm having too much fun drawing with my paintbrush right now. Let's see, we got 12 minutes left. All right, let's get these highlights on here, I guess. Oh, but yeah, you really want to make these mushrooms that are sticking out on the side of the tree. Make sure you got a few of those coming forward right here, because that's going to really make the foreground pop, that little overlapping action. And then if you lost, you know, detail in your middle ground and background, you'll want to put that back in. But we can do that with, if you're not, you know, having as much fun as I am, drawing with your paintbrush, you can put that that detail back in with the water soluble graphite. We just want to wait until it's dry. Like mine's not dry enough to do that yet. So that's the other reason to use the paintbrush right now. But once it's dry, you can go back in and you can draw on top of it. And I can do that with my other example here in just a second. Okay, so I've got my white ink and I'm shaking it up. So it's not separating. I can get a nice full bodied pour to happen. And I just realized I had an ink dropper handy and then I moved it away from myself. So I'm just pouring it in here. We've got a little pipette. That is always preferable, a little dropper, so that you don't spill it. Okay, and a little bit is gonna go a long way, so I definitely just poured out too much white ink, but I'm sure I'll find another use for it later. And then I'm using my small fine liner brush again, and I'm cleaning that off, making sure it doesn't have any more graphite on the end of it. And then I'm just looking at my highlights. So there's a lot of interesting highlights on here, like on the uh, mushrooms. And on the leaves. So I'm just going to bounce around here and you can add water to this, but you just want to be mindful that when you're adding water anywhere on this now we've got like a minefield of this water soluble graphite that's going to bleed just the same. So, you know, and if they bleed together, then you're going to end up with kind of like a chalky gray. So I just added a little water to that so you can see 
how that'll stretch and bleed. You could also put the water on there first and then add the white ink to it and let it kind of bleed like that. It's gonna also look a little different when it dries. So if it feels like you put too much, you can grab it out with the paper towel and then you know wait until it dries, see what it looks like, put it back in. But here's like the dried ones, right? So it's not gonna be quite as as thick, although this is pretty thick and opaque. So, um, but we can always, you know, go over it with a paintbrush and get some of the water soluble graphite to mix with it and tone it down if it feels a little stark. But I'm looking at some of these like big highlighted areas and I'm going to try to push my atmospheric perspective even more by making uh, bigger shapes in the middle ground. And then as I move back into the background, I can do like little dots of highlights back here. And that really is how I feel like the leaves appear in the photograph. Like they appear like little white dots back there. So, but just having that difference between the size and having them get bigger. So I can kind of use like, just push down on my brush a little bit to get those dots to be more of like rounded shapes. And then just keep pushing down and making them bigger and bigger. As we get into the middle ground and the foreground, and we're really going to achieve this effect of making depth happen just with the size of those leaves. And it doesn't hurt that it looks pretty magical, like little fairies on a forest floor, which is also something I'm very into. All right, so and then in the background, I'm just kind of putting a little highlight on some of these background trees that are showing up like these little keyhole spaces of white. And you can use your bigger brush if you want to do some of this and do like some little patchwork highlighted moments for the leaves. And if that's too much, you can thin it out. With your water brush, with your brush, or you can pull some of it out with your paper towel if you go a little too hard with it. It's really up to you how much of that you want to use. I think Sometimes I like to go a little heavy with it and make it look like a big dreamy cloud back there. But for this one, I think letting it be kind of just a few highlights here and there is a little more interesting. Okay, oh my gosh, time is going by so quickly here at the end. Okay, so same thing with our mushrooms, putting a little highlight on those little ones. And then more detail on the ones in the middle ground on the foreground. All right, I think we did it, y'all. And the last thing I wanted to do was just demonstrate. So I think I like this one better than my other one, honestly. I think it's because I drew with the paintbrush more. But going back to this other one, so this one I definitely put that detail back in more with the water soluble graphite. So you can see once this is totally dry, then you can go back in and sketch on top of it. All right, so once again, you guys are emulating my style at Adrian Hodge Art here. Please tag me if you've got a piece that is 
really stunning and eye-catching and you want to share, make sure you tag me and say in the style of Adrian Hodge. So yeah, that's it. And uh, you can put as much or as little on there as you want. And if you don't like what you added, you can add some water with your paintbrush and take it back out. So it's a pretty cool effect. You definitely can't do an additive and subtractive thing like this with watercolor. So this was my first time using the water soluble graphite to emulate my style that I do with uh, calligraphy ink and watercolor and gouache, mostly inks. Those are my, my jam. Um, but uh, I'm definitely going to be using them a lot more to, to do this sort of thing because I really love the way it looks. Okay, I'd love to see some of y'all's examples. So if you want to just hold them up, Chanel can spotlight you and we can see your work. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. So satisfying. That looks great. Oh, really nice. I like how you got some other colors going in there. Very nice. Ooh, that's lovely. And just some sketchbook paper, it looks like. Yeah, that contrast between the, the water and the, the drawn texture. It's just so nice and fun. Ooh, that's a fun one. Love those highlights so far. Yeah, and when you peel that tape off at the end, it's very satisfying too to see that clean edge you're going to have when you peel off your tape. Is that it? That's the last one holding it up, but there's a couple cameras on. So if you want to, if you want to show yours, just hold it up and I'll uh, spotlight you. I think that's it. Okay. All right. Well, and if you're not done and you want to wait to share it, um, you know, on social media, just you can send it to me directly if you don't want to post it, but you just want to share it with me. I'd love to see them. Um, so please share them. It's always so fun. Um, I mean, with any class, but especially with something like this, that's my personal style. So uh, thank you all for joining me. And next week is, um, I think, our three-point perspective class. So we're closing out this three months of talking about linear perspective. And obviously, we talked about atmospheric perspective uh, tonight. And last week, and yeah, next week is free, the uh, three-point perspective class. And then the following class is a premium class. And you don't want to miss that one because we're going to be using images of a camera that I set up, a little still life of a, a little uh, camera. And then uh, from a couple of different angles, we're going to be really putting into practice uh, what we've been learning in those one, two, and three-point uh, perspective studies using these photographs of a camera. And we're gonna be using a very implied line style similar to tonight, but using uh, the Tombow uh, brush pens, which are a lot of fun. So uh, check that one out because we haven't done that yet. And we haven't done anything like that. Then I really wanted to spend some time on linear perspective before I threw anything like that at us in these classes. And now that I've covered linear perspective so thoroughly. Now I feel like I'm ready to start using some reference photos of things that have a lot of linear perspective in it that are tricky like that, like a camera that we're looking at from different angles. So that premium class is definitely one if you want to challenge with linear perspective or to learn some tricks with the, the Tombow brush pens. But yeah, next week's class is free. Thank you all so much and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Chanel. Good night.